Hello, today we're going to be changing out the grinder in a CEF line Euro coffee machine. So, as you can see, I've removed the top and side panels. Go ahead and take note of the thermal block here. This is an older model, so if your thermal block does not look like this, do not be alarmed. In fact, if your machine does have this thermal block, kudos to you because you've kept it alive a lot longer than it should have been. Um, so here you can see all the tools I'll be using. I'll be using a pick to help to clean out these T15 screws on top that are definitely caked with a lot of coffee. I've got the T10, 15, 20, flathead, and I've got the 10232, which is the new grinder burst sold on our website, eura-parts.com. You'll get the top and bottom set, and we're gonna go ahead and replace both of them today. All right, let's get started. The easiest way to start is by cleaning out the screw heads with a straight pick. Use your T15 screwdriver to remove the two screws holding down the hopper. You may want to use an air compressor or vacuum to remove any of the caked coffee or debris in the way while you try to remove these screws if they're being a little bit stubborn. The three marks should align if it's set to the original calibration. If properly set, the three pegs will be within the threading. Tilt the adjustment dial away from the large gear to clear the threading of the three pegs holding in that top burr. The top burr may be able to come out without using a flathead. Simply wiggle it back and forth to see if, if it can remove. If not, grab yourself a flathead. Remove the screw in the center of the grinder, which is holding down that bottom burr with a T20 screw. Go ahead and hold the bottom burr in place. So hold that metal piece down while you remove the screw by spinning anti-clockwise. Be very careful with this portion of the refurbishing because those three springs and those three balls that go beneath that bottom burr are very important. So go ahead and store those away from the repair portion where you're working so it doesn't get misplaced. If you do lose these three springs or three balls or they're too rusted to be refurbished, go ahead and order them on our website. You can find them under order parts at the top left of the website. There are three metal open cylinders under that bottom burr. Be sure to set those aside if they do fall out because they need to stay with that bottom support. There's a felt ring at the bottom of the grinder. Hold that in place while you vacuum just to ensure that you do not lose it. and correct what's going on. Make sure this piece here is in place. All right, this is also again. You can see them under here. Da, da, da. And they're going to fall right into place right here. Da, da, da. And you can let her just kind of lie and then twist very slightly.
place the three springs back into their open cylinders. Replace the metal bearings on top of each spring. If you need to, use a magnet to hold it in place. Note the three holes on the bottom of that bottom bar. Those three holes need to align perfectly with those metal bearings. If at any time you believe that one of the metal bearings has rolled off out of position, please remove the bottom burr, reassess, reposition, and move forward. Note the bottom pegs under the screw support for that center piece. Those two pegs need to fit into where the bottom burr pegs are, which you should be able to see in the video. Replace that center screw and support, focusing on the two pegs aligning properly. Now you're going to use quite a bit of force now holding down that center bottom bar. So holding onto the metal, depressing downward, use your T20 to screw down that T20 screw using the T20 screwdriver. these two points. So this little latch right here is actually holding on. It's all simply plastic so you don't want to press too hard. You will break these things and I have broken these things and I'm definitely not the strongest one in the shop. So pushing in. I'm going to use my 10 to kind of like press it a little bit further and then I'm going to move on to my straight pick. My old trusty straight pick. Okay so I've got him holding firmly. Be careful not to stab yourself with this guy because He's uh, painful. Okay, pressing. Make sure you're getting a clear shot of this. Which is obviously not aeronautical science here. Okay. Flip the support over and pry open the bottom piece that holds that top bar in place. Okay, I'm gonna press in and I'm just gonna remove it. I'm moving this away from the burr because I'm going to be replacing this top burr. And with the strength of Zeus, I can do this. Okay. Okay, I'm ready to depress her back into here. So I'm gonna tuck in one, one ledge one ledge is already under that little clip. Now this clip over here, as you can see, it's, it's kind of above it, setting above. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply force to the right side. And she's in. Okay. Okay. And then we've got, we're closing, we're closing, we're closing, securing, and this generally doesn't take as much effort. Okay, we've secured them, great. So, I'm gonna take this. Drop this in, you see those two green lines have attached? So here's what I'm gonna do. My third one is over here. So I'm tilting him back, turning clockwise. And I want to align those three green lines and the purpose for that is we're calibrating after this. So we're aligning, this is our origin. That's where we removed it from.
Using a whiteout pen, mark the grinder adjustment dial and the outer dial on the grinder to align. As you can see, I gently pull upward to ensure that I do not break any of the three clips. Turn the ring six clicks anti-clockwise for a base level calibration. Secure the black outer ring onto the grinder assembly while aligning that white mark on the grinder adjustment dial. One, two, three, four, five, six. Replace the grinder adjustment dial by turning it to set 90 degrees from that outer ring. Then you want to draw a line on the inner, middle, and outer ring that aligns so that whether you're calibrating or replacing burrs, it makes it that much easier. Congratulations, as you have completed one of the more difficult repairs on your Eura coffee machine. If you can tackle this, you can pretty much tackle anything else that goes on within the machine. Although you're not done from here, you need to make sure that you calibrate based on elevation, humidity level, how you like your coffee, whether it's dark, light. Remember, this is just the starting point, so good luck.